Hello and welcome to the show. You've seen Marcus Samuelson season after season on hit shows like Iron Chef and Chopped. He cooked the first state dinner for President Barack Obama. His cookbooks are New York Times bestsellers. He owns restaurants in just about every corner of the world and credits a number of black female chefs with helping him every step of the way. Please welcome to the show, Chef Marcus Samuelson. Thank you for having me. I'm yes. so excited to be here. I am so excited to have right. you. Right, real ATL institution. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Well, you. welcome from Harlem yes. here to Atlanta. It is so good to have you, but it is, there's so many other steps before Harlem. There's mm -hmm. Sweden, there's Austria, there's all over but it all starts with a, a little boy with his little sister mm -hmm. and his beautiful mother in Ethiopia in during Ethiopia. a very yeah. different time. Yeah, very, very different time. And I was not born in the capital. I was born in the countryside. And my mother, my Swedish, my, my mother, my Ethiopian mother and my uh, sister and I, we had tuberculosis and eventually got adopted to Sweden. And mm. that's how I got my name, Marcus Samson. Marcus. But your, the, your name at birth is? Kasahun Segai. In Amharic, what yeah. a beautiful name. So let's talk about how you get the influence. Where does the influence of cooking come from? Because that comes mm. from a, 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 a motherly a role. A place too. of love. You yes. know, it comes from my grandmother, Helga, and Helga taught me everything that I know yes. about cooking. And we had so much fun in that kitchen. You know, we didn't have the fanciest pots and pans, uh, not always the fanciest ingredients, mm -hmm. but we cooked some good food. Or and Grandma this is Helga you and your did. sister. Yes, I want to point out, us. people, this is the children's pictures yes, in Sweden. In Sweden. We had fun. Very different lifestyle, very mm -hmm. different world. But this is how you grew up. But mm -hmm. then how did you end up traveling and, and finding yourself all over the world, Japan, and all, all these different places? You know, uh, I was always curious, you know. And when you grew up the way we did in predominantly white country, uh, being black kid, I knew from an early age that I want to travel abroad. Mm. I didn't know where do I wanted to go, but mm. I knew early that um, maybe I'm going to the UK, maybe I'll go to London or, or, or even America, but it was so far away, right? right? So I started to do my training in Switzerland and France and Austria and even Japan, and I always enjoyed being abroad. I think it was the mix of languages, but also what yeah. I learned, the lessons that I learned. I, still, I learned so much about cooking and yeah. techniques I got yelled at a lot. Of course. But I also course, learned part, a lot. That seems to be a constant theme with chefs and cooking, yeah. right? But the good news is that we've changed. Mm -hmm. Less yelling mm -hmm. and more focused on community. And I think that's to do a lot with the fact that women are now much more prominent. They're much more in senior position. They're in ownership. They're in senior management. And that wasn't the case. Yeah. Particularly black women. And now you have black le women leading kitchens all over the world. I read where you said it, it feels like um, with so many parts of history that black people and black women were left out of the history of cooking culture and how uh, black women shaped food. But Tell we don't more. even have to go back to then, right? I mean, as black people, we constantly have to fight to be written into mm -hmm. the history books. And there's always someone that's trying to rip it and take us out of the mm -hmm. history. But we can claim our American food. We can claim our African-American food that has ties to, of course, West Africa, of course. to the Caribbean. And obviously here, when you think about American food, if you would ask anyone from abroad, what is American food? Well, we have at least four oh original yeah. cuisines that ties into African-American history. Right. Low country, southern food that we mm -hmm. refer to often as soul food, right? Right. Creole, right? Barbecue, even Cajun. So there's many original cuisines, most of them coming from the South. Yeah that you can link back to the black experience in America. And you know and love it all, but are very intentional about weaving other foods, other countries, other cultures into sure. the food that ends up in your cookbooks. And the Rise is an example. It's a cookbook, but it's so much more. It's, a, yes. it's recipes and some incredible history stories. Well, I mean, in terms of black culture, sometimes we have to teach ourselves as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, of first course. of all, our black food is not monolithic, you know. Yeah. Uh, a Jamaican experience and food is very different than even a Haitian, right? Although they're close, but it's different. Mm. And, and I think black music has done such a great job of labeling the music and sending out to the world so people know the difference between R&B, funk, hip hop, right. etc. Right? True. And we know, right. and it gives us images, right? So we know what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. 
when it comes to black food, uh, sometimes it can be vague. And that's why hmm. it's so important to document it like that. To, to really, so we can teach first ourselves, but we can also teach others about our history and claim it because also it's a value proposition. Food matters, mm, yeah. food is economy, food is a sense of gathering. But if we don't know where we belong into this, right? we wouldn't enter into the field. Right. And we've done so much of the labor in terms of food, right? Where we were there in terms of barbecue, we were there on the field picking all the ingredients, cooking in the back. Yeah, and that's a good point. Totally is, back of the It house. is a form of knowing and understanding mm -hmm. your history. That is a really good point. And that's point. why my restaurants, majority, they are open kitchen, open bar, so you can see. And learn. Who does the cooking, yeah, right? and what. Totally transparent. And you can see that majority of our staff and our leadership and our staff are, are uh, people of color. And, you and can majority see, women of color. Yeah, and you can see why it's going to be so good. All right, yes. stay with us, Chef Marcus. We're going to continue this conversation. Coming up, we're going to get to the roots of the culinary influences. The folks who had a major impact on Chef Marcus's incredible career and his rise. And you know we weren't going to have him here without cooking up a little something. That's later. Stay tuned. It is going to be good. We'll be right back.